Hi there guys and welcome to the latest episode of the Cryptoverse, your regular dose of news and commentary on Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies and blockchains. I am your host, Chris Coney. And for today's Tuesday episode of the Cryptoverse, we are not going to turn to Bitcoin.com, we're going to turn to Coindesk.com. Because the news is boring on Bitcoin.com and I didn't just want to pick any old article to read you because I have an obligation to entertain and uh, inform you. So picking any old article just isn't proper. Neither is it respectful to your time and attention. So I've scoured and found one that I do think is worthy of your attention. So Coindesk writes, the looming war for blockchain patents or patents, you might say, if you're American. I would say a patent in in England, but patent, you know, where someone um, gets a legal ownership of an idea. So this was published um, a couple of days ago now, but it's it's not it's not terribly topical. Uh, it's not going to go out of date this article because it's um, these kinds of stories, you know, they take a long time to resolve. So that's why it's still, even though it's only a couple of days old, it's still going to take months, I think, for this to resolve. So it's still worth knowing. So it says there's a patent land grab developing in the blockchain space that could potentially make doing business more challenging for those who want to build upon the open source technology in the future. Well, straight away, open source technology, I don't think you can you can can't patent open source technology, can you? Anyway, it says, quote, everyone is trying to shake, stake their claim and plot out their business strategy, close quote. This is Ted Minar, a partner in the intellectual property practice at Hogan Lavelle's in New York. So I guess this lie is a patent lawyer. He says everyone is trying to stake their claim and plot out their business strategy. So according to Minar and his colleague, Ira Schaefer, there are a lot of patents pending relating to Bitcoin cryptocurrency blockchain and distributed ledgers. Well, you might say that you can't patent Bitcoin because the scientific paper was already released. However, the original scientific paper and the source code that was released, it, it's not exa- the Bitcoin that we have today isn't exactly the same as that. So there's been a lot of code that's been developed, techniques and whatnot, uh, patches, which technically someone could stake a claim on. You know, whoever wrote the code could technically stake it to claim to say, you know, that little bit of code there that does the security thing or prevents this, prevents that um, hack. Well, that's mine, right? And that would be like getting a, a physical product to market and then finding out someone had just been awarded a patent for a particular spring that's kind of critical to the way the mechanism works, right? You'd then have to pay a royalty fee for every single unit that you manufactured to the person that owns the patent on that spring, or you'd have to completely re-engineer your product. So it could, it would be a nightmare. Now, I say that the crypto versus news and commentary and also includes my sort of philosophical interpretation. So let's go there for a minute. I understand why patents exist, because if someone has an idea, I mean, some people have lived their entire lives off of a single patent. If you have an idea for something and and you're an inventor and you invent, it doesn't have to actually be a physical product. It can just be a schematic diagram. Let's use the spring of a particular type of spring that has unique properties, right? If you get awarded that patent, that's it. You could then technically retire because if enough people, if there's enough demand for that design, all you do then is sell licenses to use that spring design, right? And if, and if people are like, this is amazing, we need to use this spring design in all these hundreds and hundreds of different products. You could then negotiate a licensing deal where every single unit that is sold that has your spring design in it, you get paid a, 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 an amount of money, right? And that's it. You could just retire. And then all these companies are doing all the manufacturing and all the selling, and you are literally being paid a royalty for your idea. Kind of like if you wrote a song, and then every time someone plays it in an elevator or in a dental practice or uses it in an advert, you get a check, right? So I understand why they exist. And they are highly beneficial to the inventors. And as an individual who would would like to get wealthy, yeah, great, then... If I invented something, then I would probably like that idea, right? And I do like that idea. However, objectively, if you're looking at it, so I just gave you the individual point of view there. Me as an individual, as a profit-seeking businessman, yes, patent. I want to patent my stuff so that then I get paid royalties and I don't have to, quote, work for it, right? Because I've done the work in creating the idea. 
Um, and that's really how you leverage wealth because then my income isn't based on how many hours of work I put in or how much energy I expend for my physical body. It's more to do with the value of what I created, right? And value in an economy has nothing to do with time. Because if you do invent like Bitcoin, for example, um, we, no one cares, even though this is important, no one really cares how long it took Satoshi Nakamoto to crack the general, the Byzantine general's problem, which is the key thing, uh, that could, you know, why Bitcoin couldn't be created before it did. No one really cares how long that took, right? It may have took two minutes, it may have occurred to him all of a sudden, and then he wrote the paper and then boom. Or it could have took years and years or decades, maybe. But no one really cares. That doesn't have any impact on the value of Bitcoin, right? So that's the individual point of view. Now, my big motive getting into Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies and blockchains is for the benefits to the collective. So I categorize humanity into individuals, uh, communities or tribes, that's section two, and then the collective. So the individual, we just done that, all the individuals who are you know, seeking their own uh, personal goals, personal pleasures, personal de desires, brilliant, right? Getting what they want out of life, category number one. Category number two is when you put a certain number of those individual individuals together and they become a community or a tribe. So that could be, a tribe doesn't have to be small, it could be a family unit of five people, or it could be a company of 500 people but they all share, you know, something in common that isn't shared with the, with other communities or the rest of humanity necessarily. And then when I say the collective, I mean the collective humanity. Like, so if you boil down all the things that define an individual, all the things that divide, define a community, and you take all that away, every human being does have certain things that we share. Like we all have the same basic human needs, you know, we're all in the pursuit of happiness, we prefer pleasure over pain, you know what I'm saying, right? So I got into Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies and blockchains for the benefit of the collective. So I'm not for or against any particular community or tribe. I don't really think in those terms. I mean, some people do. They're very community oriented. I'm not very community oriented. I'm much more collectively oriented. I'm looking at the big picture and how it can benefit the collective, which means how does it have universal application for everybody? And that's why I said in my interview with Josh the other day that access to information and access to finance and equality of opportunity is key. Now, that's not to say that everyone should be entitled to the same outcome. No, 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 no. That's very individual. But I do believe that we should all have the opportunity, the equal opportunity to do what we want and build successful lives without barriers. If the individual chooses because they've got a bad attitude or they're lazy or whatever, if they choose not to take the opportunity, that is th up to them. That's on their head. And they take responsibility for the results in their life. However, I don't like the idea that someone who does want to be a go-getter or make something of themselves can't because of some kind of physical, mental, or societal or collective barrier that's placed on them by a law or an institution or whatever, right? So where I'm ultimately going with this, back to the patents, is that the downside that I see of patents is that if I do invent something like a cure for cancer, pharmaceuticals is a good example because a lot of medicine is patented. Um, and you could argue that that is a gross detriment to the collective. If someone did invent a cure for cancer and managed to get granted a patent on it, that would be terrible for the collective. So the, the individuals who own the patent, they're going to make out like bandits. They're going to be so wealthy you wouldn't even believe it, right? But only the minority will be able to afford that medicine. What about the other 99% who can't afford it? If we took the Satoshi Nakamoto approach, which is to invent Bitcoin and then give it away, well, that's like a gift to the collective. Sato it, Satoshi could have patented it, I suppose, or could have kept it for himself, could have made it into a private company, whatever. The thinking behind it doesn't matter. All we know is the way it went was he gave it, he, she, they gave it away, gave it to the collective, and the collective is benefiting like never before. And given that that was the principle on which the whole cryptocurrency community and the whole cryptocurrency concept was born, for companies 
to now start thinking about patenting Bitcoin blockchains and cryptocurrencies and whatnot just proves that they do not share that principle. It's a situation where those individuals value uh, their personal gain above the collective. Now, I see that as misguided in this way, because ultimately you can't help but be a selfish human being. Even even like there is no such thing as a selfless act, because, you know, the um, the act of giving often makes us feel good. So which is actually so we're doing it so we feel good, which is why you can't, there's a kind of a logical loop. You can't really do a selfless act uh, because you get rewarded for it. There's no, no such thing as a purely selfless act. And it has to work that way. If we didn't feel good for doing something for someone else, well, we'd, there'd be no motive to do something for someone else, right? So this is how I see um, benefiting the collective. The collective makes up the environment in which I live as an individual. So I can complain about how the world works, for example, or how the collective is being governed and so on, and how that affects me as an individual, and I can blame the collective, or I can get to work building things that will benefit the collective, and that will make its way back to me in an improved environment, right? So I'm even doing that, even though I say I'm for the collective, I'm still being selfish about it, because I'm trying to improve the world that I live in for me. And yes, the rest of the world will benefit, but that's kind of a secondary benefit in my mind. It's win-win. So if I go out and help to benefit the collective, the world will improve, and that's the world that I live in, therefore I've improved my world. And that's much more abundance thinking than going after a patent for a blockchain that could be massively beneficial. It's short-sighted because if I patented the blockchain, or whatever the technology is, for myself, I might get um, paid a lot but it won't, it won't improve or transform the collective. And therefore, all the other things that I hate about the world, you know, people's attitudes or crime or this or that or the other, none of that changes. So the quality of my life, the net improvement to my life is only financial. And all of the other things that could improve my life and make me you know, feel better about living, they don't change. And that's because of short-sighted selfishness rather than the long-sighted selfishness that I'm about, which is benefiting the collective so that it wakes its way back to me. Now that was an impromptu, off the top of my head, uh, unpacking of my belief system. And I've took 12 minutes to do that, so I'm going to have to come back to this article tomorrow because it's uh, getting a bit long in the in the episode now. So hopefully that was mind-expanding for you. I'm, I'm pleased I managed to structure it like that because it's it's important to me that you, you understand where I'm coming from. And I'd like to share those kind of ideas so that you can see things from a perspective that you may never have considered before. So I'll, I'll come back to this article tomorrow and then deal with it in full. But we just kind of, uh, that sparked off a real deep uh, philosophical thought there. So basically, I don't agree with those people patenting the, the technology that could benefit the collective, put it that way. Anyway, well, that's going to do it for today's edition of the Cryptoverse with me, Chris Coney. Thanks very much for listening today. Please go to cryptoversity.com, go to the podcast page, and subscribe on your favorite platform. If you like the audio version, you can go to iTunes, Stitcher, or Google Play. If you like the video version, you can go to YouTube. And please also support the Cryptoverse by sending us a Bitcoin tip to the Bitcoin address on the screen there, on the uh, podcast page, or by going to Steam It, click on the Steam It button, and upvote this episode on the Steam Network. There are two other ways you can support the Cryptoverse. One is by going to our merchandise store, where you can buy a t-shirt with the Cryptoverse logo on it, or an iPhone case, or anything similar. That kind of stuff helps us out a lot. Or if you'd like more structured information on Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies, and blockchains, head over to the courses section and buy yourself an online course. All right, guys, until tomorrow and the next episode of the Cryptoverse, it's me, Chris Coney, saying bye for now.